I want you to pay attention to this narration. I want you to write it down. Because this really, if I was to summarize the whole intention and purpose behind this lecture, and the point that is trying to be put across at the end, you will find it comprised in this athar. This one narration. So you should write this down and don't forget, and not forget it. Mufaddal bin Muhalhal, he said, if a sahibul bid'a, law kana sahibul bid'a, idha jalasta ilayhi, yuhadithuka bi bid'atihi, hadhartahu wa farrarta minhu. He's saying that if a person of bid'a came, and you were to sit with him. And then he started telling you his bid'ah. Started narrating his bid'ah to you. Then you would take caution from him. And you, were, you would have fled from him. Right? If the person of bid'ah was to, was to come and do this. But look what he says next. وَلَكِنَّهُ وَلَكِنَّهُ يُحَدِّثُكَ بِأَحَدِيثِ السُنَّةِ فِي بَدْوِ الْعَمْرِ فِي بَدْوِ مَجْلِسِهِ However, he won't take that approach. Rather, what he will do at the beginning of the sitting is that he will start with the ahadith of the sunnah. He will mention to you the sunnah, the ahadith of the sunnah. ثُمَّ يُدْخِلُ عَلَيْكَ بِدْعَتَحْ Then after this, he will enter his bid'ah upon you. Then he will enter his bid'ah upon you. Then he says, فَلَعَلَّهَا تَلْزَمُ قَلْبَكَ Perhaps it might then stick to your heart. So how then, it, how then will it leave your heart? Now think, ya ikhwan, about this narration. Think about it very carefully. Because this narration, there couldn't be advice which is more golden than this advice for, for our In fact, for every time, but for our time, there could be more advice which is more golden. Because let's understand what is this advice really saying as it relates to our time today. What it's saying is that these Mubtadi'ah, they understand that they can't come to you as a Salafi and say to you, for example, that, that rebelling against the rulers is wajib. If anyone came to you and said that to you, you would be taken caution from him and you would have fled from him, exactly as Mufaddal said. So, and likewise, if someone came to you and said to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is neither in the universe, not outside the universe, not to the left or the right, and so on and so forth, you would have fled from him. Or if someone came to you and said that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, that they were scum, or they were this, or billah, and they started mentioning these words to, to show their enmity against the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and their hatred of the Sahaba, or that the Sahaba were just men and whatever. If someone came to you with this, with this speech and this foundation, then you, you would flee from him. But this is not how these people come. How these people come is they will come to you and they will start with Aqidatul Wasitiyah. I'll teach Aqidatul Wasitiyah. Or they will teach at Tahawiyah. Or they will teach the books of the Salaf. Or they will make an ascription to Ibn Baz. Let's teach the books of Ibn Baz. You know, the various books of, on Aqidah, Fiqh, Usul. Or they'll come to you with Shaykh al-Albani. So these people, you will see that they will spend time and period telling you the ahadith of the sunnah, just like Mufaddal said. Telling you the Salafi Aqidah, refuting the Jahmiya, refuting the Ash'aris, refuting this and that and whatever, speaking ill even against the Ikhwan and the Tabli, yes, we, they have mistakes, whatever. Bringing all of this to you first. And so when they have done this with you, then they start bringing the bid'ah. Then they start bringing the bid'ah. So now, Ya Ikhwan, do you understand this method? You understand? This is not a new method. The Salaf knew it in their time. They knew it in their time. And this is the same method that we see people applying today. So I want you to keep in mind this narration. Keep in mind this narration of Mufaddal. And keep in mind the asal of Ahlul Sunnah as it relates to Ahlul Bid'ah. Because this behavior, the, our, our, the implementation of the principle of al-wala wal bara as it relates to the mubtadi'ah, has become an asal in the religion. In fact, it is an asal which is included in all the books of the sunnah. 
So when we see Imam Ahmad, for example, mentioning the usul of sunnah from the foundational principles of the sunnah, they are, what is he mentioned? The first two or three. Stick to the sahaba, abandon innovation and its people. So this now has been entered into the, the usul of the religion. And he mentioned it before all of the other things. Al-Qadr, Asma'i was sifat and so on and so forth. So it has become an asal of our religion. So just like we hate, we love and hate on the basis of Allah's names, His attributes, the subject of Al-Qadr, the subject of Al-Iman, and so the subject of the Sahaba, then likewise this asal is included in those things around which we, which we show love and hate. Right? So when someone opposes belief in Allah's names and attributes, we love and hate on the basis of that. When someone opposes the issue of Al-Iman, we love and hate on the basis of that. When someone oppo- opposes the issue of Al-Qadr, we love and hate on the basis of that. And likewise, this issue of the Mubtadi'a, because it is derived from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, it is also an asal from the mighty usul of this religion. And so therefore, we love and we hate on the basis of that as well. Meaning, if someone comes along and opposes this asal, and he doesn't behave in accordance with this asal, then we love and hate on the basis of that asal, just like we love and hate on the basis of al-iman, and asma wa sifat, and al-qadr, and the sahaba, and belief in the unseen, the hawd, the, 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 you know, the, the sirat, and other than that, then it's the same, we don't distinguish. And we see that the salaf, and the imams of the salaf, included these as fundamental principles of the religion. They always included the, this issue of the sahaba, and tarukul bid'ah and abandoning the innovationist people. Okay.